What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 times we thought Roman Reigns would lose his title. This should be a very interesting list. There's been a few times where I thought, are they gonna pull the trigger here? It, it, it looks like they may potentially pull the trigger here and ultimately they don't but it, this should be a very interesting one that that's a testament to some good storytelling when you may think oh it could end right here or this is a possibility of it ending hopefully the title reign ends at this year's wrestlemania please let it happen let cody finish his story so we can get on to the next chapter of roman reigns uh story which i do think is uh going to be roman versus the rock also i did get a chance to check out his legends uh biography roman reigns legends biography and it was really great it was it's really great to get his uh perspective on things or how his career was going at the beginning and where he is now it's, it's actually pretty awesome definitely a great watch go check it out if you haven't seen it already the fact that he already has a legends biography just lets you know you know he's a certified uh <laughs> a hall of famer wwe future hall of famer certified legend in the wrestling business you know roman reigns has reached that peak so uh we're gonna check this out should be a very interesting video go back down memory lane check out some of these title defenses where we was just like oh it it's, it seems like it could end right here but it ultimately didn't should be a good one let's get right into this one man one two is this, is this on, on? Roman Reigns 1000 plus day world championship reign has seen numerous memorable feuds and matches and amongst the tribal chiefs insanely long run with the belt there have been a few occasions where fans thought he may be defeated based on the story that was told it's there! Uh -huh. Wait a minute shoulder down Roman Oh that was such a good Roman one. Reigns Riddle's caught him all chaos Riddle's got to do it damn it he's got to do it and Reigns kicked out of two the planet I never thought Logan was going to win at all. I thought it was going to be a good match, but I just didn't see it happening. Today, we'll highlight these matchups and dive deep into each feud as we look at 10 times Roman Reigns nearly lost the title. Reigns' first big feud while Universal Champion came against his cousin Jey Uso. Mm -hmm. This was where we initially saw how important a role their family's bloodline and lineage great, would play in this great, overarching great, great. story. Roman demanded to be accepted as the tribal chief and was willing to beat Jey into submission until he and Jimmy Uso acknowledged Reigns as the head of the table. Just like when we're little kids, I'm gonna whoop your ass. This has to stay on my shoulder for our family to stay where it is. I don't just feed your kids with this title. I feed a whole family with this title. At Clash so of the Champions good. 2020, Jay proved he could hang as a main event single star by taking Roman to the limit. It's so good. All you had to do were to say the words, acknowledge me as the tribal chief. Ask my brother Jay. Oh my God, that was Jimmy Uso. I hate you. This is so good. This is Why so you gotta do me like that? The return bow at Hell in a Cell was even better. It was here that the Bloodline so story good. first began to really pick up steam. <laughs> Reigns had to 10 with two challengers going into WrestleMania 37 in Edge and Daniel Bryan. Roman made it 100% clear what his intentions were going into the show. I'm going to smash him. I'm going to stack him. I'm going to pin him one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Despite Reigns' confidence, WrestleMania is about happy endings. And what better way to close out the first WrestleMania back with the fans than to have a babyface like Daniel Bryan standing tall, with the whole crowd yesing in approval. But it was at Mania 37 we would get a taste of just how dominant this title reign was going to be. It was a fantastic contest and a stellar match. Really good match, bro. This this match was so fucking good I, my favorite part is the the double submission they had roman in this was so good bro so damn good however the outcome was the most convincing of victories for roman doing exactly what he set out to do it wasn't easy building to a wrestlemania men event without fans at the shows i will beat him down so bad that we're gonna have to put him on a legends contract i love this business i don't need it 
I do it because everybody needs me. That was a good. That was so good too, bro. Oh, this was, in my opinion, seeing this version of Roman Reigns play out on television weekly in the pay per views. He was the best part of each show, bro. His matches were so damn good, bro. So good. But the wrestlers made it work. Cup shaft out of edge on top of Daniel Bryan. Reigns pins both men to repeat. After again seeing off Daniel Bryan and Edge this time in separate singles matches, it was time for one of Reigns' old rivals to drop yep. back in. Oh my god! Oh my god! Seven, <laughs> This program with John Cena was going to show how far Roman had come since their previous feud. Cena had completely taught Reigns a new one on the mic last time out. Because when they look at you, they see what I see. A cheap ass, corporately created John Cena bootleg. Consider me like a drug test, Holmes. Yeah, he was cooking him, bro. You ain't getting past me. However, this was a much different Roman Reigns. His promos had improved greatly, and he was far better prepared to go against Cena. Yep. It's like missionary <laughs> position every single night. <laughs> 20 plus years of missionary might have been good enough for you, but it wasn't good enough for Nikki Bella. Oh. <laughs> See, Cena's not in the ring. We've already seen Mr. Missionary tonight. Did John Cena write that promo for you, huh? Are you going to say the same stuff? <laughs> <laughs> John's approach going into the match was also different. It's as if Cena shows up, we cheer. Is this like bizarro world? What's going on? If you can find somebody who makes missionary position entertaining for two decades, keep him in your life. It's going to be worth it, I promise. <laughs> he spoke about how all he needed was three seconds to end Roman's reign. This was a simple yet effective way to hype the match. It also helped that John was immensely over on television. Fans were overjoyed to see him again and they wanted a Cena victory at SummerSlam. Oh my goodness! And Cena from behind! One, two, three! But as we've seen already, this incarnation of Roman Reigns was drastically different to before. Mm -hmm. Cena! I never thought at one bit that he was going to be John Cena. We knew why he was here. We knew why John was here to really solidify Roman Reigns as the 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 guy now that that the fans finally have that Vince finally wanted so we we kind of knew but still feud was good match was great for the 17th time in his career and Roman Reigns kicks out again well we got the impression on TV that this version of Cena with the fans all behind him would have handily beaten the 2017 Roman nah. there was no stopping Reigns as the tribal chief just like that, Roman Reigns will retain! Roman didn't have time to soak in the victory against Cena, oh since boy. the head of the table immediately came face to face with his next challenger. A new look Brock Lesnar sought to avenge his loss to Reigns at SummerSlam three years prior. But things would be far more interesting mm -hmm. this time round, given Roman's association with Brock's famous advocate, Paul Heyman. Of all the championships that we can go after together, why the Universal title? I already read the damn contract this morning with my advocate, Paul Heyman. <laughs> my tribal! Bro, this is so, this was good storytelling because this was the one where it's like they could pull a swerve here and I think initial reports was Vince ultimately wanted it to be a situation where Roman Reigns potentially loses the championship and he would become a babyface. But obviously I what happened at day one i think it was supposed to happen at wwe day one but uh roman i think had COVID, so he couldn't show up and it kind of changed everything i believe it was COVID. I, I think that's what it was he was it was COVID, or uh he I, or he was sick i think it was COVID. but either way he wasn't able to be at that pay-per-view event and that's the rumors is he was supposed to drop the title to brock and it was supposed to be like a double turn in a sense but don't know how true that was, but either way, this was very interesting adding Brock to this mix and the whole dynamic with Paul Heyman. Chief. <laughs> you know, I've had it with your disrespect. Had it. 
the speculation on where Heyman's allegiances lied made for a compelling program. Reigns' illness at the start of 2022 sadly put a dent in the plan, uh -huh. but what this did yep. do was raise so, the stakes for the start of 2022. Yep. Unfortunately, earlier today, I had test positive for COVID. Yep. So, yeah, he, he, that's, that's the reason why he wasn't able to perform at WWE Day 1 sadly put a dent in the plan, but what this did do was raise the stakes for WrestleMania tenfold, since Roman being taken out of the day one event meant Lesnar was added to the WWE title match, which he ended up winning. That's it! Wiped! Shouldn't have pinned Big E for that, but okay. Out the field! I've never seen a performance like that! Thus setting up a winner-takes-all clash at Mania, Heyman ultimately turned on Brock for good at the Royal Rumble. Meaning Lesnar went into WrestleMania alone. Oh, there it is. And this could be it. Oh, come, oh, on. come on. Come on. Roman's arm was going to snap. And Reigns with another spear. Roman's arm is out. I feel like the match obviously could have been a, a lot better, but he ended up actually getting injured mid-match, and they kind of had to call an audible. I think his arm, one of his arms was dislocated. Uh, the fact that he was still able to continue the match is fantastic. That was the reports, and that's what it just looked like. But uh, they had to call it audible. I think they had a lot more planned for the match, obviously. Brock would get one more shot against Reigns at SummerSlam in a last man standing match. So good. Where a loss would mean Lesnar could no longer challenge for the WWE Universal title while Roman was still champion. This is so good. This proved to be the two men's best match with one another so far. Brock went to insane lengths to try and win, but the bloodline interferences would prove too much. Lesnar's lifting up the ring with Roman Reigns in it! Brock Lesnar just lifted the ring! Lesnar can't breathe! Reigns feud at the stop 2022 with Seth Rollins showed us how much Rollins and his turn on the shield influenced Roman to become the character he became. This betrayal caused Roman to demand unquestioned loyalty from the bloodline at all times, while also being manipulative and greedy with power. The mind game Seth played into the run-up to the Royal Rumble clearly got to Reigns. When I said this was really good too. Oh, this was good. Did I think I know there was a uh there were a few well, not even a few. There was a decent amount of people that actually thought Seth was going to be the one to do it, which at the time, I still didn't think so because one, Seth was a heel and Roman, even though he was cool and the fans liked him, he was a heel too. I just didn't see, you know, I didn't see another, I mean, granted them doing the heel versus heel match is a rarity and um, it worked in this situation because of their history. I just didn't see him dropping the title to another heel, especially in Seth Rollins. I, I've always figured since he's been built as his final boss character over the years, they would drop, he would most likely drop the title to a baby face to kind of give them that extra boost. So I, I didn't see that happening, but a lot of people were buying into the fact that he could drop it to Seth. Didn't you pack in with the chair to the back? You still couldn't do it on your own. You needed your famous bloodline. They're the ones who hold you up, just like me and Mox did in the shield. The Usos are your pedestal. And the crazy thing is, even though Seth technically still at this point was a he wasn't really a good guy, he was starting to transition into it. Especially in this feud. Because I still considered him a heel at this time. It's just fans were singing his songs more and he was starting to transition in two-way baby face so i guess you could say it kind of worked but obviously the history alone was just it was you know something that people were looking forward to i created you and i can destroy you you look like a clown you sound like a clown because you're a clown then you've brought more shame to your family than anybody rollins also played up how roman had never won a match between the two when a title was on the line <laughs> And Seth Rollins beats Roman Reigns every single time. The finish at the Rumble was left open ended so since good. Reigns could only keep his title due to being intentionally disqualified. Rollins looking for the stop. Rollins hit the stop. Beat the champ. He's going to beat the champ. He got him. He got him. This is good. Roman Reigns is not going to break. Reigns is going to be disqualified. This is so good.
therefore allowing this feud to be revisited at a later date. When WWE announced they would be holding a major event in the United Kingdom for the first time in 30 years, it seemed only right that Drew McIntyre would challenge for the- Now this one, I actually, I, I didn't believe they were going to do it, but they actually came, watching the match, I actually thought they were going to do it. Leading up to it, I was like, nah, they're probably not going to give it to Drew. But when you watch this match at Clash at the Castle, which is a fantastic match, there, there's for a second, I thought they were going to do it. When Drew hit the spear on Roman, I was like, oh, they're going to do it. I think they're going to, I, I, I think this is it. He hit the spear in the Claymore. Like, bro, I'm like, oh, this, this may be it. They may actually pull the trigger here. This was so good, bro. For the world championship since he was the company's biggest star from the uk a drew victory would have surely rivaled the conclusion to summer sam 92 at wembley and it certainly felt like a great deal of momentum was in his favor somebody has to take that title off the part time champion i don't think you represent those titles the way they deserve to be represented and you do not deserve to be champion <laughs> <Whoa>! <laughs> This is good. At Clash at the Castle, fans would again be reminded of how Reigns' story was here for the long haul. The end of the reign! Play yep. Brand new champion! Oh my god. It wasn't going to stop, not even for a picture perfect fairy tale ending. Yeah. The WWE debut of Solo Sikoa was the difference on the night, as the bloodline became even stronger. Solo hangs through across the top! Following the clash, Sami Zayn's association with the Bloodline became the highlight of WWE programming every week. Yeah. It was during this period that the faction's storyline became can't miss. The segments with Sami were so entertaining. Meanwhile, Roman was becoming more revered as a ruthless leader. I don't give a damn what the tribal chief said. So good. <laughs> so good. What? Do you think you're me? Do you think you're me? Do you think you're me? Do you want to be me? Do you want to be the tribal chief? On top of being such an endearing character, Zayn having to constantly prove himself to gain mm -hmm. the Bloodline's acceptance got him over big with the audience. It got to the stage where fans didn't want to see Sami become accepted as family. They wanted it. And this, this was so good because you got all these group of heels and Sami, this endearing baby face trying to be with these guys. And it just worked, bro. It, it worked. This was... This was a great pairing. And they they milked this as long as they could. And it was fantastic. Led to a great match between Roman and Sammy. Did I think Sammy was going to win? No. A lot of people thought this was, you know, Sammy was going to be able to pull off the upset. No, it, it wasn't. It wasn't going to happen. But the story here was great. It seemed defeat reigns for the belt. I owe you one of those. can't follow directions explain to me why i have to treat you like a child i give you opportunity after opportunity i let you in my family and this is what you do this is the respect you show me it all came to head when zane was tasked with destroying his former best friend mm -hmm. kevin owens in order to become a fully fledged bloodline family member the result was one of the all-time great angles in wwe history Bye. Sammy was now going to battle Reigns for the championship so at the good. Elimination Chamber event. And best of all, it was going what? to take place in Zayn's hometown of Montreal. Because I am going to be the one to take him down! Roman! You are going down! If Roman's last title defense was a prime opportunity to drop the belt, Goosebumps. then this seemed just too good to be true, given the fantastic story that had already been told. Miracles! Smackdown so and subsequent pay-per-view event in Montreal were full of emotion. Spear to Sammy! And of all the damn ways... You know, it was kind of an unhappy ending tonight. And I'd be lying if I said that doesn't affect me. After everything that had gone down, fans were still left waiting for that happy ending. If Sami Zayn couldn't finish his story because there was a greatest tale being told, then surely it was that of Cody Rhodes. And that's what I thought. But then when you think about it in hindsight, it's because, you know, they wanted to, Vince definitely wanted to break that thousand day record. So, but I truly thought this was it. And no, hopefully, 
Hopefully that's not the case this year. Someone who, upon returning to the WWE, oh, made it his mission to win the WWE oh, Championship so he could finally story. bring this belt to the Rhodes family. Cody gave off huge main event character vibes in the run-up to Mania. All the while, Roman had remained that seemingly unbeatable final boss. Despite this, now more than ever, fans were convinced that the Tribal Chief's dominance would come to an end, and it was going to happen at WrestleMania 39. Rhodes cut riveting promos during the build-up. Every segment meant something. At WrestleMania, when I take those titles, Personally, it's not because I think I am somebody, it's because I want to be somebody. There hadn't been such a big fight feel going to the main event mm -hmm. of WrestleMania in years. At WrestleMania, I finish. Have you ever even competed for one of these? This is good. You didn't want to do the Stardust thing, so what happened? You ran away. You started a company and a promotion that you couldn't get over in. Fans <laughs> could picture the ending before it even happened. Only, it never did happen. At least not yet. Crossroads! Oh my god. And I kick out my rage! Pedigree for the title! For the title! Oh my god! This is such so a thing. This is as real as it gets. And the man I beat tonight, his dad told me that 10 years ago. Story is unfinished, but a lot of good stories have a lot of pages. The greatest story we talked about previously lied within the bloodline. So good. Jey Uso's disdain for Reigns was observed back in 2020. And in the time since, we'd seen Jay continue to blossom as a character. After seeing how Jay... Now this, recently, I was on board. I was like, fuck it. If it wasn't going to be Cody... I'm on board with this. I know some people weren't, but I was on board with this because it made sense. If it was Jay, it made fucking sense. And Jay was the first person to pin him in like three years, bro. And it comes full circle. Oh, bro, that shit would have been that. They stood up for Sami Zayn been, after how unfairly Reigns had treated nearly everyone in the bloodline. It was only a matter of time before Jay turned on Roman. And I'm out too. But <laughs> your ass is left on the island of relevancy all alone. At Money in the Bank, Jay made a massive so step towards good. being the next head of the table by becoming the first person to pin Roman since 2019. This was unexpected, but it set up a tribal combat match at SummerSlam 2023. Mm -hmm. This is tribal combat now. Do the elders know about this? It was their ideals. When you lose, you ain't gonna be tribal chief no more, man. I don't even want to be tribal chief. <laughs> However, Jimmy's interference cost Jay the victory. This was so stupid. They, this this was stupid. The reasoning behind it was stupid. I would have. I, I know a lot of people are like. Oh, I hope they don't do the jealousy route, but I would have preferred that or something. I actually would have preferred. Fuck it, Jimmy. Just saying, I'm jealous. Cause this was stupid. His reasoning made no sense. No sense. <laughs> Their story was ultimately going to lead to a match against each other. I would never be able to live, Boots, if I let you and watch you become an egotistical ass like Roman Reigns. Meanwhile, for Reigns, there was one man with unfinished business. Cody Rhodes' return match with Roman was set for WrestleMania 40, but The Rock being in his cousin's corner added a different dynamic compared to the previous year. Meanwhile, Seth Rollins stood next to Cody. Fans were once again invested in seeing Rhodes finally capture the WWE title. Rock's presence created huge buzz and made things even more interesting, but at the end of the day, it was still about Cody finishing his story, with the family ties being an even bigger factor this time around. You need to finish your story for yourself for your dad, for me, for every single person here. You were only a chapter 
in my book. Nobody cares about your story. Nobody cares about you finishing the story. When the Rock and Roman Reigns beat both your candy asses on night one and on night two, it's bloodline rules. All in all, it made for a fantastic build as the stage was set. Roman had proved for over a thousand days you shouldn't bet against him. And in that time, he'd shown more than once that WrestleMania doesn't always mean happy endings. But yeah. no matter the outcome, the story will finish. However, only one of wrestling's royal families will prevail. Now, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out this our similar great, video. Man. This was This was fantastic, bro. This was fantastic. Uh, I love this video, man. Just going back down memory lane. Uh, there's only a few. Drew, I during the match, I actually thought they were going to pull the trigger. Cody last year, I thought they were going to pull the trigger. And if anything, uh, Jay from last year, I thought they were going to pull the trigger. Those are like the three matches. Truly, I thought they were going to actually pull the trigger potentially either from the story or the match itself um but not nah, this is he's on a legendary run i do think it's time to hang it up not because he you know he doesn't kill it in the ring i just think his run his run it's it's ran its course no pun intended i think that he's beaten damn near everybody there is to beat anyone else new you already know how the outcome's gonna play out because no one else has been built up to beat him the only other person they have built up is Cody, bro. They literally had this nigga run the gauntlet for a whole year to come back to do this all again. And now he has to face the rock, the bloodline. It's even, the stakes are even higher now. I think it makes sense to have Cody run the gauntlet for a whole year, deal with all the trials and tribulations to come back and finally do it. Because if you have this guy come back, a year later, win back-to-back -back Royal Rumbles, do everything he has done over this past year, beat Brock Lesnar. <laughs> beat Brock Lesnar multiple times in one year. You have him do all this only to lose again. You've wasted everyone's time. You've wasted all our time. And you ruined you're one of your top baby faces. Essentially, your top baby face. You ruined him. Because no one, I don't want to say no one. A lot of people are not going to care no more. I'm one of those people. You ruin, he does not win. Cody's done. He might as well just hang it up. I don't care. Whatever championship he wins, it won't matter. He will always be the guy that won back-to-back -back Royal Rumbles just to not get the dub. It'll be pointless. So we'll see. But comment down below. Let me know what match had you guys thinking Roman's going to lose. He actually may lose this match. Like, what match was it that you really believed, okay, it's over. The title reign is over. Let me know who it was against, what match it was. But I appreciate all the love and support. Rotel and 50K. And I'm seeing you on Speedy YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See you on the next one. Peace.